Good morning and welcome to Lutheran Church of the Resurrection. I am Pastor Karen Paul. It's a blessing to have you here on this Palm Sunday. And I'm intern John and I'm happy to be back socially distancing ourselves here, but in the sanctuary with Pastor Karen finally uh, to, to be with you in worship this morning. Uh, it is a gift and as we gather together, we uh, celebrate Palm Sunday today with uh, palms here. Intern John and I have one. You also received a wonderful little palm cutout to be colored or just to cut out to celebrate today in your email on Friday. So if you'd like, you can bring that out and to celebrate Palm Sunday with us. You can also find a greenery in your home that you might have that's fake or real. Uh, find a branch out that you can share with us as well. Um, but a wonderful way just to celebrate together Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem that we give thanks in this Holy Week. And we invite you, if you are able, to, to pull out the bulletin on our website or up on your phone or your iPad or just follow along as well with the worship that's on um, the screen today. You're able to do that as well. But we give thanks to come around and celebrate as we begin this wonderful Holy Week worship. As you're able, we pause for a few moments that you can uh, pull those things together and then we will begin a wonderful time of confession and forgiveness together. Now let us in, enter into a time of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us take a few moments for a time of silence for reflection and self-examination at this time. Now let us join together with the words of confession this morning. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. And in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. May Almighty God strengthen you with the power of the, through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. We join together this day for our Palm Sunday acclamation. We give thanks for this glorious day. So gather your palm branch, your palm cutout or colored palm, or any greenery you have at home, or just join together with us in this time that we give thanks for this Palm Sunday. And we say, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Join together, Hosanna, Hosanna in, in the, the highest. highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in, in the, the highest. highest. And now please raise your palm branches or whatever branch you have at home. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that, joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you, through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now we join together in singing our gathering song today, 
one of the wonderful Palm Sunday songs on glory, laud, and honor. Join me for the prayer today. Let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Today's Gospel reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the 21st chapter, verses 1 through 11. I invite you at home, when we get down to verse 9, to please join in, in in speaking the bold words that you find in your bulletin today. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Well, good morning. As I come to you virtually here at LCR from our sanctuary, uh, obviously Pastor Karen and I wish that you could be with us this morning um, physically, but we, uh, like, like all of us, we are, we are respecting these rules that are in place so that we can all stay healthy. However, I do, I do think about this text in a different way because of how I see an empty sanctuary. It's Palm Sunday. And, and I don't know what that means for many of you. I, I, I'm, I'm assuming that a lot of you know what, what Palm Sunday is. Pastor led us into the blessing of the palms as we began worship today. It is a reminder of the scene that took place when Jesus entered into Jerusalem. But I wonder, have you ever asked, what is Palm Sunday? I'm, I'm going to discuss a few ideas that I have about what this day meant and what it means for us now. Palm Sunday, uh, technically in the church calendar, is the last Week of Lent, the first day of Holy Week as we near the day of Easter. Palm Sunday is also called Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. It's a day of celebration where people line the streets, overflowing with eagerness and anticipation about who Jesus was and what he was going to do. It's a day of celebration that Jesus is King. In the Gospel reading, the crowds chanted, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. 
In the Gospel of Luke, we read that the, the whole multitude of disciples began to praise God joyfully for all the deeds of power they had seen. Some churches, like ours, have a tradition of processing into the sanctuary on Palm Sunday with joy and, and waving palm branches above their heads. And unfortunately, we couldn't do that today together. But, but that is why we, we, we bring these into the worship space, to remember that. It, it, it's a celebration. It's, it's like a, a parade. Uh, if anyone's ever been in New Orleans and they've seen a big jazz parade take place down the streets, that's what it makes me think of. And, and that's true. Palm Sunday is like that. But it's also nothing like that. Because let's not forget that the people gathered along the street that day, the, the, the people who were, who were looking forward to seeing this Jesus, this king, didn't end up getting what they thought they wanted. So Palm Sunday is also a bit of an irony parade. Palm Sunday is also a declaration of the kind of king that Jesus is. He, he rides into town on a donkey, for one thing, rather than in a chariot or on a war horse. As the crowds say, he ushers in peace in heaven and glory and the highest heaven. He's unarmed. He has no bodyguards or security detail. He doesn't have handlers, all of which is rather terrifying when you think about it. It's almost like a shuttling the Mona Lisa around in a cart in the middle of a parking lot and just leaving it unattended. It, it, it's terrifying and unimaginable. Yeah, this is how our Lord enters into the scene. And Palm Sunday is a reminder that the disciples, as usual, don't really know what's going on yet. They're trusting and following Jesus into Jerusalem, but but they don't know how the story will end. Palm Sunday is also significant. It's a significant shift in Jesus's operating procedure. See, the Messiah, Jesus, who, who we've read over the past few weeks in Lent, loves to hide, the one who shushes people and doesn't want them to tell about the things he's done, all of a sudden allows himself to be the center of attention in one of the most public and loud ways possible with a parade. And not just any parade, but a parade where the crowd had religious leaders in it who in the Gospel of Luke were bold enough to say to Jesus, shut it down, tell them to stop saying these things. And, and Jesus' re reply in the Gospel of Luke is, if they were silent, even the stones would shout. Palm Sunday can also be a bit sad because it's such a stark contrast to what will happen a few days from now. Indeed, what is already in the process of happening, it's a parade with a really, really bad ending because all these people cheering and yelling who, who are so excited will also become those same people who are shouting and yelling, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. Palm Sunday is busy and crowded and overwhelming and everything kind of looks the same, but everything is in fact not the same at all. And, and there are endless things that you can find there if you decide you're looking for it. It's the reason, by the way, that there's endless commentaries on Palm Sunday. Because you can find just about anything in the story leading up to it and, and what takes place during that time. And where's Jesus, we ask. And, and, and we know what he looks like and we know he's in there. But sometimes it takes a while for us to find him because there's so much stuff, so much other stuff that's happened and we know what's going to happen. So where is Jesus, we ask, even though we know he's right there in the middle of everything. You see, friends, I think the bigger question is... What are you looking for in Jesus? A king? A political leader? A hero? A winner? Do you want him to avenge your honor? To justify your beliefs? Do you, do you want him to restore order in order to maintain the status quo? Do you, do you want him to make his disciples stop with all their questions and just give them a clear answer that shuts them up? Do you want the parade to be over so you can get your donkey back or your coat back? Do you want him to turn around and leave town? What Jesus are you actually looking for today? Palm Sunday is a gut check because we do look for those things. We, we do want those things at one point or another in our lives. And, and now more than ever, we want answers and we want some clarity. And, and we want things to be the way that we think they're supposed to be. But we are a confused people, just like those early Jews lining the streets for reasons we don't really know. Where is Jesus? What Jesus are we looking for? And I don't know what Jesus it is that you're looking for. There's a chorus to a very famous Rolling Stones tune, and the words are, you can't always get what you want, you can't always get what you want, you can't always get what you want, but if you try sometimes, you just might find you get what you need. Palm Sunday is like that too. All of Holy Week, in fact, is like that. We don't get what we want. We don't get disciples who exhibit bravery or valor or, or really much of anything. Uh, we get a lot of betrayal. Uh, we get a lot of denial. Uh, we, get, we get these dramatic scenes where we think perhaps the Lord's going to burst free, but it doesn't happen. We see a criminal get set free while an innocent Savior is condemned. 
None of this takes place. Someone innocent on the street is asked to help carry this cross. All, all of these things don't make sense. We have no idea what is taking place because we can't always get what we want. And, and to be honest, like these early Jews, we don't even know what we want sometimes. We can't even say what we want. But this time we will get what we need because in Jesus we get a Savior who defeats death with love. But I'm getting ahead of myself. You see, because we have to sit here on Palm Sunday looking towards Holy Week, not sure what is going to happen. There's one more song I just want to share with you, just the lyrics. Um, I've been listening to a lot of music at home these past few weeks, as I'm sure many of you have. Uh, and, and there's this song that Leonard Cohen uh, speaks, sings. If, if you YouTube the song, Leonard Cohen's Anthem. I encourage you to check it out. Um, but in this song, Cohen calls us to put aside our cynicism, our pursuit of perfection, our selfishness, and to cling to our brokenness by remembering that in our brokenness, God meets us. Friends, we are in a time right now of uncertainty and anxiety, and it's in these moments where these little cracks appear, and that is where I believe light shines in and does some amazing work. We hear these words. The birds they sang at the break of day. Start again, I heard them say. Don't dwell on what has passed away or what is yet to be. Ah, the wars, the diseases, they will be fought and dealt with again. But the holy dove, she will be caught again, bought and sold and bought again. The dove is ever free. Ring the bells that still can ring. Forget your perfect offering. There is a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. We ask for signs. The signs were sent. The birth betrayed, the marriage spent. Yea, the widowhood of every government. Signs for all to see. I can't run no more with that lawless crowd while the killers in high places say their prayers aloud, but they've summoned, they've summoned up the thundercloud, and they're going to hear from me. So listen, ring the bells that still can ring. For your perfect offering, there is a crack, a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. Every heart, every heart to love will come. Ring the bells that still can ring. Forget your perfect offering. There is a crack in everything, and that's how the light gets in. What is Palm Sunday? Palm Sunday is a day when we must finally, once and for all, forget our perfect offering, our perfect idea of how we're supposed to present ourselves to God and just be. Just see our God entering into Jerusalem. Just know that our God is going down for our God's death, but our God will rise again in defeating that death. And know that on this day, this Palm Sunday, as we celebrate, it's because we have a God who loves us enough to allow us to do so. We have no perfect offering. A rabbi once said that when God made the world, God made it good, that's the language we use instead of the word perfect, and that was on purpose. Forget the perfect offering. We are a confused and oftentimes half-hearted people, but we find ourselves, and I think more than ever, we find ourselves realizing just how much we need each other. And we have a God who has given us the ability to love each other in really powerful ways, and we have to be creative about how we love each other right now. And so we come to you today virtually telling you that we love you, reminding you on this Palm Sunday this Palm Sunday, to, to, to be aware of the Jesus that you are looking for. Hosanna, we cry, waving our palm branches, just like those who don't know, who sat there not knowing what would happen, wishing for the revenge instead of redemption, power instead of true peace. Hosanna, we sing loudly while confining Jesus' life to little more than some sort of parade or, or, or contest of popularity on that day. But instead, Hosanna, Hosanna, we cry. And the joke is on us because Hosanna means save us. It means save us. And that's exactly what Jesus does each and every day. So Hosanna to God in the highest. Amen. Rescue 
for sinners, ransom from heaven, Jesus the Lord. By the bread, his blood the wine, broken and poured out, for oh, all for none. The whole earth trembled, and the veil was torn. Love so amazing, love so together to gather together in the gift of the modern creed today and we join together in saying that creed as a community of faith we believe in a god the creator force that sustains and nurtures humanity in ways beyond our understanding we believe that jesus of nazareth embodied the power of this force extraordinarily able to grasp its meaning he revealed this face of reality to us in his life and teaching. Because he was human like us, through grace and mercy, he offers us access to this incomprehensible power. There are forces in our lives that attack humanity, that bring suffering, poverty, and death. Because of the strength of such forces, Jesus was rejected and killed. But death did not silence his voice. Evil will not destroy the good that he showed us, a good that lives in us and through us. The power of this creative force is at work in our lives today. All those disciples before us gave witness to this source of life and goodness in their words and deeds. We, as followers of Jesus, will likewise give witness in our words and deeds. In the gift of our faith, we will fear no evil. When we waver, goodness and mercy will rescue us beyond our lives, Grace will abound, and the Holy Spirit will continue to empower us. Amen. Join us as we enter into a time of prayer. We will pause after each prayer for a time of reflection or to offer up a prayer upon our lips. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. God, with open arms, we pray for the church universal its ministry, and the mission of the gospel. Lord, hear our prayer. 
God of creation, we pray for the well-being of creation and its continued care by all of God's people. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of reconciliation, we pray for peace and justice in the world, the nations and those in authority, the community we live, work, and serve in. Lord, hear our prayer. God of compassion, we pray for the poor, the homeless, the hungry, the sick, the greedy, the lonely, and all those who suffer now in body, mind, or spirit. We pray especially, Lord, for those undergoing chemotherapy. We pray for Megan. We pray for Rick. We pray for healing for Brian, who is hospitalized with kidney issues. We pray for all volunteers working in the food banks, helping to provide food for the most vulnerable. And we pray especially for healing for our members facing health concerns. For Don Schwartz, Sandy Nielsen, Sandy Miller, Jamie Doe, Jim DeCamp, Kit Camden, Mel Christofferson, Jackie Kirk, Julio Sun, Shirley Wilson. We especially pray for our world. As all those who are struggling in this world as leaders and all those who are working together for this COVID virus that is around our world. For the doctors, the nurses, all those healthcare workers and those who clean in our healthcare facilities, all the extra facilities, the testing facilities, everywhere around the world that is affected by this virus that you may lift up those that are affected by it, the families that are affected by it, those who have lost their jobs, those who are in transition, those who are trying to figure out a new way of life as we are staying safer at home, and just our entire world that is going through this challenging time. That there are anxieties, there are stresses, but also that even in the midst of these challenging times, we may be able to find a glimpse of hope in the midst of this. That Christ reminds us that in challenging times, God is always with us, and that there is hope in the midst of darkness, that we can come together to support one another. Lord, hear our prayer. And God of salvation, we pray for those who have faithfully gone before us. May the wisdom and witness of these saints in light continue to bless us as we give thanks for their rest and peace they have found. O oh God, you have called your servants to an amazing journey of life in which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet we do not even know, and through risks unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that the Holy Spirit is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And now we will enter into a time where we join together in saying the Lord's Prayer. And you can say it any way that you are led to say it this morning. Let us pray. We give thanks as we are sent out into our homes, safer together, but also um, some of us do travel out as we either get gas or we run to the store or to the Walgreens or wherever we're going. And as you um, transport or have someone go out and get some stuff for you, we do have home communion or home Easter communion and home Holy Week resource bags available at church. And as you can, come by this week to pick them up Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. From 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., we'll have the front doors of the church open so you can come into the front vestibule area and pick those up. There is a number 654321 on the white bags. 
That is the number of communion cups that are in each of those bags for you and your family. So take the number that you need for communion cups and take that home with you. And we will use those communion cups and the on Easter Sunday together and the resources during the week. Join us for Good Friday at noon and afterward the service will be available online and Easter Sunday at 9.30 together. Please share that that is available for your neighbors and friends and family and we look forward to having you online with us. Also, thank you so much for all of you who have dropped uh, um, your wonderful offerings in our drop box at church, have mailed them into church. We give thanks and are just blessed. And those of you who have gone online and, and tried it for the first time to do online giving, we had a handful or plus of people that have done that and switched on to online giving. It's a gift and blessing that you have so faithfully gone on and supported our church in this time of transition, in this safer home and social distancing time. It's a blessing to continue to support the ministry that we are so um, passionate about here at Lutheran Church of the Resurrection. So thank you very much. And it is a gathering time together to do that. Any other announcements that I, I forgot about? Um, just a reminder that after worship today, you will be able to see our lovely mugs even longer in our virtual coffee hour. Yeah. And so please, uh, you'll, the, the link will be sent to you. It has already been sent to you at this point. Well, we get um, probably another one this week with yeah. the cross. And so please join us. We had a lot of fun last week connecting with people. And so we really look forward to connecting with you uh, after worship uh, today. So join us online. And if you haven't done Zoom before, find a friend that can help you figure it out. Or call intern John or I. We'll be able to help you as well. Um, so you can see one another and just check in with one another and say hi after worship. You start that around 10, 10, 10. Mm -hmm. But get online and we'll uh, have some fun together. So receive God's blessing today. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with great and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, go in peace as we share the resurrection by loving Jesus, changing lives, and reaching out to serve. Thanks be to God.